listening to that as much as we've been playing it. Uh, my name is Tyler Terrell, and welcome to Old Time Radio Theater. Um, before we get started, if you could just take it a second and make sure your phones are on silent, we would really appreciate that. Um, it was just a, a second here to go for any place. And we're all in place. All right. Um, we're very fortunate to have a guest host tonight. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with his name. We have Mr. Norman Gilliland with us. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, everybody. You know that uh, phone ringing wasn't a problem we had in the 1940s, but it uh, becomes increasingly an issue today, doesn't it? Even as we try to go back in time, which we'll be doing for the next uh, old hour plus here in a wonderful environment for this kind of thing here at Green Bay. So, I had to say a couple of words about the song you just heard because it's not just any old song. It was the top single of 1945, a big hit for the Andrews sisters. Had a couple of issues though because, first of all, the networks wouldn't run it because it had alcohol in the song. There was another problem and with the Coca-Cola, that was considered free advertising. So radio stations around the country uh, didn't necessarily carry that song, popular as it was. There was a third issue, which I get into only reluctantly. That was the actual lyrics of the original song from Trinidad, which uh, would not play on any radio station in 1945. And the Andrews sisters recorded it. They had just 10 minutes left in a studio session, didn't want to waste the time. Well, here's a song, let's sing this one. That's the one that they just tossed off without even really thinking about the words that became the top single of 1945, drinking all that rum and Coca-Cola. <laughs> well, we'll go back to 1934 now, which was when Dashiell Hammett wrote a novel that was serialized in Red Book, and I think in some ways of thinking, he introduced his greatest characters, Nick and Nora Charles, in his uh, story, The Thin Man. Now, like Dashiell Hammett, Nick Charles was a retired detective. Uh, Dashiell Hammett was in the Pinkerton Agency from 1915 to 1922, took some time off to serve in World War I. That impaired his health somewhat. And that may be the reason that he retired from writing detective stories with the one that uh, they'll be sampling tonight there in 1934, although he lived many years longer. With Nick and Nora Charles, he introduces a light touch to the detective genre. Uh, and by the time it got to radio, 1941 to 1950, that touch could get very light indeed to the point of, oh, I think we just stumbled over a corpse. Uh, as I say, Nick is a retired detective, and Nora is a wealthy socialite. It's a great combination for some great mysteries, and in particular for tonight's The Great American Menace from December 1st, 1944. Presenting radio's most popular mystery comedy, The Adventures of the Thin Man. <laughs> Night, and in the apartment of Joan Winslow, an attractive young thing just out of bobby socks, Plunger Belson, a husky young bruiser just out of football socks, is talking to someone on the telephone. Oh yeah, pal? Well, you listen to me, pal. You are the type of rodent that carries the bubonic plague, of which there can be no lower. Goodbye! All right, Plunger. Now come back to the couch and tell me how you carried the ball in the fourth quarter for dear old Ipswich. Oh, Joni, I hope you're a female with an understanding personality. What are you mad about? I just spoke to an individual who calls himself Alistair Floritin. Oh, him? Well, I'm going out to kill him. Plunger, you gotta tell me what happened in the fourth quarter. This is no night for romance. I'm gonna murder him. So long. No, Plunger! Don't Plunger! Hello, Nick. Do you 
remember me? Oh, should I? I'm Joe Winslow. You once got me out of a lot of trouble. Well, I've got a feeling I'm gonna regret that. Of course, I, I remember you now. Uh, Joan Winslow, come in. Who is it, Nikki? Oh, Joan Winslow, darling. Uh, I, I see you're in your pajamas. Oh. Where are you sleeping? Oh, God, don't let the pajamas fool you, Joan. Is that real hair you've got on your chest? No, I buy it by the yard from Macy's. <laughs> Is that what you came to ask me? <laughs> well, of course not, you silly. I'm just nervous. You see, it's about a man. What do you want to do, uh, marry him? No, kill him. You, you mean murder? Well, yes. What else would I mean, Goofy? Now, how can I kill him without getting in trouble? Are you kidding? No, it's Alistair Florentin. The decorator? Yes, you know him? Mm-hmm, yeah, he's a heel. But uh, why do you want to kill him? Because he wants to marry me, and his personality doesn't appeal to me. Well, that's a brilliant reason. Look at me. Do you think I could drive a man wacky? Can I pass as a femme fatale? Well, you'd sort of be a femme fatale junior grade. Uh, what's that got to do with it? I could stab him in the back and claim self-defense. Or maybe I ought to use a gun and some arsenic. Nick, what would you recommend? Look, Joni, with me, sleep is a major occupation. Now you go back to your kindergarten and leave a tired old man alone. You think I'm joking. Well, aren't you? No! Joni, I'm gonna talk to you like a father. Come here and sit on my lap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but are you gonna be a papa? Or a sweet daddy. <laughs> oh, Joni, where do you pick up such ideas? Well, ever since I got out of mini blouses and into high heels, all the men want to talk to me like fathers. Well, this one is going to act like one. <gasps> what are you doing? Huh? I'm turning you over into the official position of spanking. No! Yes! <gasps> That's for getting weird ideas about murder in your head. And that's for waking me up. And even worse, this is for getting me out of bed. Whoa! Nikki! Oh, oh, hello, dear. Nikki, you spilled that girl all over your lap. Hello, Nora. What was he doing to you? Spanking me. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. My feelings were hurt. Okay, now, Joni, Joni, on your way, and uh, you better forget about murdering anyone. Now, scat. Oh, right. But you'll be sorry if I make a mess of this murder. <sighs> Nikki, will you answer it? Oh, can't you? No, dear, I'm very busy dancing with Cary Grant. Oh, nuts. Hello. Hello, Nick. Did I wake you up? No, not at all. I'm talking in my sleep. This is Alistair Floritan. Floritan? Haven't you been murdered yet? I... How did you know? Never mind. Uh, what is it? Well, just that. Someone wants to murder me. Who? Well, there are oodles and oodles of nasty people who hate me. Some of them are my best friends. <laughs> Nick, what's the best way to fool a murderer? Listen, Floritan. I'm not the Mr. Anthony of criminology. Where do people get the idea of bringing their murder problems to me? I'm just a well-to-do bum living on his wife's income, and I'd like to sleep. Really, Nick? You wouldn't like to see me killed, would you? For free? Yes. But if you're charging admission, no. Now, Nick, I know I'm obnoxious. Florton! <gasps> Florton! Hello? Hello? What happened, dear? Alistair Floritan was just bumped off, I think. Oh. Well, that'll teach him not to call us in the middle of the night. Nick, isn't he the man Joni wanted to kill? Uh, that's right, baby. Wiggle into your woolies. We're going to his apartment. Oh, I do wish people would get bumped off before we go to sleep. <laughs> Come in, Norm. 
Hmm, it's dark. Where's the light switch? Oh, uh, here, I, I, I've got it. <gasps> there he is, Nick, bleeding all over his Chippendale table. Yeah, shot in the back. Somebody took this joint apart. Wonder what they were looking for. Do you think little Jody killed him? I don't know. I thought the spanking made an impression on her mind. Nick, you're not gonna find no killer in that desk. No, but I think I found a secret drawer. Maybe I can open it. Darling, did you ever have a queer feeling that you were being watched by unseen eyes? <laughs> well, not since we used to neck in the living room of your Aunt Agatha's house before we were married. Hey, I, I opened it. The bulb in this lamp is still warm. Darling, I... I've got a feeling the killer's still here. Hey, hey, Nora, look at this stuff. Here's a doctor's prescription for some sort of poison, and... Hey, hey why'd you turn the light out? Well, I didn't. Ah! Any time is the perfect time to visit Luna Cafe in De Pere. Whether it's an informal breakfast or lunch meeting, meeting friends socially, or it's just time to treat yourself, Luna Cafe is the place to go for delicious coffees, teas, and delectable menu items. Luna has been small batch coffee roasting on site since 2000. Stop in and try one of their many special coffees. Sanibel Island Blend, Good Dog Blend, the popular Luna Stout Blend, and just in time for the holidays, the Reindeer Fuel Blend. Don't forget that Luna gift packs make perfect holiday stocking stuffers. Luna Cafe is located at 330 Main Avenue in De Pere, open daily from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Remember, Luna equals local. And now to return to tonight's adventure of The Thin Man. We find Nick and Nora holding down the floor of Alistair Florentin's apartment. Someone who had been concealed there turned out the lights and fired at them. Nora, are you all right? Mm-hmm. I guess whoever fired at us got away. Yeah, looks, just looks like it. Now, why did you scream? You pushed me down and I bumped my curves. Did you see who went out that door? No, darling. Your heel was in my eye. Now, uh, turn on that lamp. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, Nora, that closet door near the light switch is open. That's where the killer hid. Well, aren't you going to go out and find the person who did it? And get shot at again? And besides, I, I want to finish going through that secret drawer. Will you, uh, I'll look around the rest of the joint? All right, dear. What else is in the drawer besides that poison prescription? Ah, uh, clippings. About a wealthy Mrs. Gardner, who was held but never tried for poisoning her husband in California. Now, wait a minute. Uh, here's something else. What, dear? Oh, uh, it's a letter signed by Richard Belslin. Uh, Richard, yeah, the, the stockbroker. Oh? Yeah, it's a confession that Belson embezzled funds that belonged to his clients. Darling, don't, don't you get it? Alistair Florton was a blackmailer. He evidently made quite a business of it. Was he ever on the football team of Ipswich College? Well, I, I hardly think so. Why? Because I found a little gold football here. The name Plunger is engraved on it. Also the date, 1940. Hmm. Uh, did you find anything else? Mm-hmm. This necklace. It has a locket on it. Joan Winslow's name is on the locket. People certainly seem to be losing things around here. I'll take that. Hello? Hello, this is Olga. Oh, hello, Olga, darling. How are you? Who is this? Alistair, of course. Whom did you think? No, you are not Alistair Florentin. He always calls me a double vodka because I am such you are Nick Charles, no? Yes. Alistair's dead, no? Murdered. How do you know? Olga, no. You found a prescription, no? 
Yes? Who told you? Old I know. I tell you what that prescription means. I tell you who killed Florence. You seem to know everything that's going on. Old I know. Come to apartment 8B999 East 89th Street at once, and I will tell you. No? Yes, uh, I'll be there. Hey, who told you I was here? Olga, no. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, that was Olga, dear. Uh, listen, I'm going to meet her. Will you go to see Joni and find out what uh, her necklace was doing here? You sound like you're trying to get rid of me. Suppose I go to see Olga. Oh, swell. Then I'll go see Joni. I've got a good mind to give her another spanking. Uh-uh, you sound too anxious to see Joni. I'll see her. I'd much rather you see some you don't know quite so intimately. <laughs> the idea? I find it better to do business in the dark. Where are you? Right here, behind you. Oh, oh, uh, would that be a gun you're poking into my back? Yes, Nicholas. What are you? A Russian she-wolf. Well, uh, don't look now, but one of your arms is crawling around my neck. Yes, it makes it easier to get into your pocket. Do you have any objections? Uh, yes. Uh, can't you pick my pocket without tickling? Oh, I am sorry. But perhaps this will make you more comfortable. Hi oh, oh. Are you unconscious? Yes. Oh, you must be a very hot-blooded man. It takes you so long to go out cold. But I fix it. <laughs> oh. Better? Better. <laughs> Well, you better come in and wait for her. Well, who are you? Joni's boyfriend? Uh, I guess so. We prefer to think of each other as soulmates. Uh-huh. It's all on a very elevated basis. Yeah, too elevated. What's the matter? You having troubles? Well, look at me. Do I look like a guy who's easy to twist around your little finger? <laughs> If my little finger were a steam shovel, it'd be a lead, lead pipe cinch. Well, Joni can do it. She makes me do anything she wants. Makes me feel like a big dope. Maybe you should be firmer with her. Well, how? Well, be tough. Menacing. Me? Mm-hmm. Haven't you ever been menacing in your life? <laughs> Not with girls. When then? Well, when I played football for Ipswich College. Football? Ipswich? Yeah, I was All-American back, 15. You know, maybe if I got myself into a football mood, I could handle her. Well, why do you want to handle her? Well, take now, for instance. She shouldn't be out traipsing around. She should be here. Home. One, two, three, hike. What on earth are you doing? Uh, getting in my football mood. Do you know Alistair Floriton? Yeah, why? Do you have a little gold football with the name Plunger written on it? I used to. Plunger's what they call me. Plunger Belson. Belson? What's so amazing about that? Everybody has a second name. Are you in the stock brokerage business? No. My dad is a broker. Hey, what are you up to? Oh, 
Nothing. Ah, uh, don't kid me. You didn't come here for nothing. This has something to do with that rat, Floritan. Well, I'll explain when Joni gets here. Now look, my dad is a very sick man. If you or anybody else tries to make trouble... Please, please, Plunger. You'd better go back to worrying about how to handle Joni. Okay. You know, if I had someone to tackle, it'd put me in just the right mood. Hmm, I'm sure it would. Uh, what are you looking at me that way for, Plunger? Don't you run at me! I'm gonna tackle you! Good gravy, no! By golly, yes! No! Ah! <laughs> <sighs> What's the matter with you, Plunger? You lost your little mind? You know something you do? You know all about my dad in Floridan, don't you? Well, suppose you untackle me and let me get off the floor. I don't like conversations on a low level. You won't get up until I squeeze the truth out of you, and I mean it! Plunger, you sure worked up a swell menace now. Well, that tackle did it. Nora! Oh, hello, Joni. Nora, what have you done to my Plunger? Hello, sweets. Plunger? What was she doing to you? Oh, don't worry, Joni. He didn't fall for me. He was showing me how he makes a flying tackle. Oh, <laughs> when Plunger talks about football, he gets impulsive like that. Did he hurt you? Well, there's one thing I'm sure of. Football isn't my game. Ow! Nora, what are you doing with my purse? Getting out this gun, Joni. I thought it looked kind of bulky. Get him up, both of you. What? Now, Plunger, suppose you tell me how you and Joni killed Alistair Floritan. Oh, oh, call off the Cossacks. You feeling better now? What? Who are you? Laura Marshall, I live here. Where's Olga? I don't know what you're talking about. I just found you draped on my bearskin rug, unconscious. I'll bet you were surprised. Uh-huh. I don't like men when they're unconscious. Who are you? Nick Charles. Nick Charles? Oh, Alistair told me he was going to call you. Do you know Alistair Florton? Yes. Did anything happen to him? He was murdered. How well did you know him? Too well. What happened here? A gal named Olga phoned me. He told me to come here and said she'd tell me who killed him. Olga, hmm? Do you know her? Yes, but uh, uh, how much did you find out about Floritan? That he was a blackmailer and an all-around jerk. Well, it looks like little Olga's trying to get me into trouble. She was one of the women he blackmailed. There was some suspicion that she killed her husband with poison. Wait a minute, I, I had a prescription that I, I could send... It's gone! Olga stole it! And the other papers are here. Do you have a letter written by Richard Belson, the broker? Yes, uh, here it is. How do you know about it? Belson wrote that letter years ago to his partner. The partner refused to prosecute and gave Belson a chance to repay that money. It was repaid. Every cent before the partner died. How'd Florton get the letter? I don't know. But I do know he was using it. You see, Belson has a son, a football player named Plunger. The old man is very sick, and Florton thought that this would be a good time to hit the son. The shock of a scandal like that would kill the old man. Florton was a sweet thing, wasn't he? He knew his way around. Why are you telling me this? I'm not dumb. You'd find out anyway. Look, I'm trying to help you because I figure you'll keep quiet about me. Is it a deal? Uh, maybe. Uh, how about helping me some more? Anything you say. Come with me. Where are you going to take me? To see my wife and a junior femme fatale named Joni Winslow. <laughs> Joni's confessed to killing Alistair Floritan. 
Joni, what made you do it? Oh, well, Alistair was in love with me, and he threatened me with all kinds of things unless I married him. Then tonight he got fresh and broke my necklace, so I killed him with the gun that Nora's got, and Plunger's football was on it, on the necklace. I mean, he gave it to me for a present, not the necklace, the football, see? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, let's see the gun, Nora. Well, this gun hasn't been fired since 1902. Oh. It has cobwebs in the bell. Look. Oh, gee. I knew I should have cleaned it. Why did you lie, Joni? To cover Plunger? Yeah, Nora. You see, earlier tonight I said I was going to kill Floritan. He was trying to blackmail me into giving up Joni because, well, he was in love with her. He had a letter my father wrote years ago. I know all about that letter. But I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. He wasn't home when I came to murder him. I know you didn't kill him, Plunger. Olga did. Tell us how you did it, Olga. Uh, are you talking to me, Mr. Charles? Yes, you're Olga. You're crazy. I checked with the elevator operator. He saw you enter Florentin's apartment. He saw you leave after you shot him. You stole that prescription because it proves you murdered your husband in California. You can't prove that. Oh, every word of it. In fact, Florentin gasped your name into the telephone receiver when he was talking to me. You know, you should never kill a man when he's on the phone. Olga, it interrupts the conversation. Get him up. Don't move, any of you. A gun without cobwebs. Yes, and if One, you... One, two, three, hi! Ah! Huh. Uh, what a tackle. Just like in that game against Harvard. You're getting very good at tackling women, Plunger. You knocked her out. Oh, and look what fell out of her figure. The prescription. Nick, you never told me that Floritin said her name on the phone. He never did. Darling, you're wonderful. Oh, I don't know, baby. Any experienced husband could have pulled the same trick. What's an experienced husband got to do with it? Well, he too knows how to tell the right fibs at the right time. <laughs> dumps lately. Yeah, Chucky. I just haven't been myself the last couple of weeks. Well, Bucky, might I make a suggestion? Sure, Chucky. I'll try anything to break out of this funk. Have you heard about the positive effects of bread? Why, no, I haven't. Specifically, Great Harvest Bread in De Pere. Well, everything's better in De Pere. That's uh, Tell me more. <laughs> I will. Great Harvest Bread Company mills their own Premium whole wheat every morning you used to work at the mill in De Pere. You get great tasting bread that also has some great health benefits for you. Sort of like Obamacare, huh? Whole grains! They can reduce the risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and other nasty stuff. I feel better already. So my advice, Bucky, get to Great Harvest Bread Company in De Pere. And don't forget, you can also find Great Harvest Bread at the New Leaf Winter Market. Great Harvest Bread, the way it ought to be. And now for the solution of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. All right, darling. I know how you eliminated Joni. But how would you eliminate Plunger? Well, I figured that the dame who phoned us at Florton's was the killer. She knew entirely too much about what was going on. But she fooled me by getting rid of her accent and offering to help me. Her object was to pin the job on Plunger after she got that prescription. And when the prescription was stolen, and not the letter Plunger's father wrote, you suspected her? Mm-hmm. Oh. But there was always the possibility that she wasn't Olga. So I lied right to her face, accusing her. She, like many another amateur murderer, was under a tough, nervous strain. 
and she pulled the gun and gave herself away. Mm -hmm. I never knew you were such a wonderful liar. Did you really spank Joni when I came in on you? Of course, dear. Don't you believe me? You're too good a liar. You never spanked anyone before. I don't even think you know how. Oh! Well. Believe me now. Yes, dear. <laughs> good night, Nikki, darling. <laughs> Was it really about the mystery, or was it about Nick and Nora? <laughs> the All-American Menace, December 1st, 1944, from the pen of Dashiell Hammett, who laced his books with booze and rods and cries. Well, like the Andrews sisters, the Mills brothers were real-life siblings. Back in 1928, they put together an act, and early in their stage career, uh, they were playing some kind of novelty instruments as well as singing, and one of the brothers misplaced his kazoo. Doesn't that sound painful? Anyway, so, so they improvised, and in one of those great moments of serendipity, it became kind of a landmark, a hallmark of the Mills Brothers to imitate, with their voices only, musical instruments. Uh, uh, their first uh, recording for Brunswick Records was something called the Tuba Tiger Rag, and it became a huge hit. And you can, of course, still hear it today. They're imitating all the musical instruments with their voices. It's a trademark for the Mills Brothers. And here they are with another one of their hits. You always heard one you love. Because I love you most, most of all 